okay, hello 50p again. Let us buy something online, we have done this many times. Thing is not respond. It's not respond. So, we have done this many times, we probably uh, have done it on mobile web too. Uh, you go to a site, you add something to your uh, you know checkout cart, then go in, add your card details, then proceed, then buy, probably you get an OTP and do some uh, two factor authentication and finally, you have your product there uh, which is ready to ship, right. Or probably you just wanted to buy some fruits online and you had to build some shipping address and the payment options, what is your shipping address, what your uh, you know payment address should be, what is your payment type and things like this. So, here is a study done by Baymart, uh, the second most reason where people were uh, abandoning their uh, checkout card was because of the complicated checkout process, right. The first one of course, was like uh, creating an account which kind of solved now with uh, many ways uh, to authenticate and log in the users. Can you make a guess on how long the average checkout time is measured in terms of checkout steps? 5 to 7 steps? I was seeing a someone flashing a 5 there, but that is almost close, it is 5.42. I think those guys were the guys, guys who have done lot of checkout on different websites. <laughs> that was a very good guess. Uh, it is around 5.42 steps and the checkout length measured in terms of form fields. Uh, the number of form fields you have to fill before your checkout is you know confirmed is around 8, 10, 20, 15 shall we average it out 14.88 fields. I think someone at the back got it right. What if we had this? Suppose our sites makes a call to uh, some API and then that API orchestrates all our uh, pain points of filling a checkout form which already has your uh, shipment address, it has shipment modes like can it ship fast, can it ship do a normal shipping or can it ship on, on a drone or something or make it faster than even or it also has your um, uh, you know uh, account information, the user information, mobile number and the card different type of cards that the user already has and, and there is no form to fill, it just goes and clicks on the checkout button and there is an API which takes care of all this uh, headache and the user just clicks pay and you get the card information and then you pass, pass it the pass the same data to your payment gateway and you are good to go. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it be good if we have such kind of an one button checkout experience? Welcome to web payments or we are talking about what web payments is in general and specifically about the API called as payment request API. Chapter 1, the structure of the payment message. I will probably try to dive a uh, bit on what the API looks like, what are the structures like and, and then we will probably look into a demo to get more clarity. So, I think most of them are aware of this uh, beautiful JSON structure uh, which we use in our day to day for data uh, exchange, right. So, I am just giving a quick overview for people who are not really at there like it is just a key value pair you can assume that you have a title, you have a type and you have properties and you have something like required which is an array. So, basically it is a JSON object. So, before we see what the API looks like, we need to get few key terminologies or key jargons right. Nothing very complex there, it is it's, uh, this, this term called pay, pay is the entity that receives the fund, right. And then we have payer, the guy who is paying to the pay. And there is the payment service provider that can be your card institutions, electronic payment message, post office, post office CI, yeah, we still have post office today. But that is directly from the spec, so. So, these are the key terminologies that uh, we need to keep in our mind as we proceed. So, how does a payment request look like? So, payment request basically will have a type, a description, payment terms, payment details and payment options. So, this is how it would look, again it is a, it is a JSON object. Uh, so, you have a type, we are saying it is a payment request and the description like payment to 50p dot in and payment terms, you have a payment method uh, that is just like a legacy card payment on my site, it is an endpoint just for the fun of it. And then the payment amount uh, 4.35 dollars can be INR or it can be any uh, currency value you want to set. And then you would get a response uh, from the API. What would the response look like? The response would have a type, description, payment terms and payment options. 
So, something like this where we have the type description payment and the payment method specific response details will be plugged in there and we have the payment options which of course was there in the first as well. Chapter 1 the payment roles. What are the payment roles? So, assume that this API is like a mediator. So, he is sitting between your browser and your payment gateway and he is taking care of all the uh, hard work that you would have normally done with uh, you know saving probably saving the card on your side securely or having a, a, a less form fields or trying to use autofill form fields to make things easier and faster. So, assume that this API is like a mediator who is sitting there uh, between the payer and the payee and helping things to get smoother. So, what basically happens is the, the payer comes in and adds something to, to his cart and then goes to checkout. So, that then we mediate the checkout process uh, to this uh, mediator API which kicks in and helps to uh, identify the card and add it uh, and get the card details and pass it on back to the site because he is a mediator he does not really work as a payment gateway. He gives the details back to your site and you then process validate do whatever you want on that and then pass that information on the back end to the gateway get it authenticated and get the payment cleared. So, so on the front end for the user there is there, there is these things are uh, very opaque he does not really see all the all the complex stuff that is going behind it just just a click for him and the mediator takes care. So, if you see here uh, we have your uh, payment app oh, sorry for the pop up we have our pay payment app and we have the mediator we have the payee and the payment network. So, the payment network can be uh, any of uh, it, it can be either uh, those cards default cards what we have or it can be uh, the external APIs like probably like Google pay Alipay or like even Apple pay these are kind of the fundamental uh, uh, payment networks that are supported on the, on the request API. Uh, there are proposals to integrate uh, other services probably even uh, I saw a few uh, stalls here on uh, Razor pay or pay you guys even they could probably integrate only thing is it is it is a bit of a, a complex process everything should uh, all this uh, payment you know, gateways or uh, the app should be PCA compliant uh, there is something called as PCA compliance where uh, if, if you are trying to make an on online transaction using a, a credit or a debit card you should have some compliance rules uh, you should adhere to some rules so that you you you, uh, you are assuring that the card is secure and you are not doing something uh, fraudy on that card right. So, so uh, there is also a proposal which says uh, we could also get in cryptocurrencies as one of the payment methods. Uh, so, as of now we have uh, credit cards as, as basic card payments and uh, the, the Alipay and the Google Pay whatever I mentioned. So, here is a, is a flow of uh, the payer uh, registration of a new app which I was talking about. So, there is the mediator uh, operated by the payer right. So, that makes a request to the uh, uh, you know the payment app and the payment app uh, gives a registered uh, true or false like was the registration successful and then the payment app says a payment app registered it says like, hey I was registered uh, with this mediator. Then there is this enrolled uh, payment uh, instruction instrumentation that goes in and the payment instrumentation enrolled uh, gives a handshake. This is basically the handshake that happens when you are registering a new payment app. Uh, this is the flow where the payer buys uh, from the uh, merchant website or uh, maybe a small app, web app as, or, or a normal app as well like very this this the whole idea is to have the uh, you know the checkout process on a browser web uh, mobile mobile browser uh, to be very smooth and effective. Uh, Yes, here is the example where the mediator the payer uh, clicks on the buy button on the website and then the payment request is sent to the mediator where the mediator makes a, a check on select payment app for transaction details and the payment request is sent to the payment app and, and there is again the payment response the dance that happens and the payment response goes to the website and then the payment instructions goes to the payment network that is like oh, your visa or credit card or debit those those kind of network and those, those, those validate and say hey it was successful I was able to do the request what you sent to me and then finally the purchase is successful. This is the whole dance that happened but for the user as I have been mentioned it would just be uh, I want to pay this amount and then he would probably hit his uh, CVV or CVC number and that is it that is great. So, at, at, at any point of time if you have some uh, clarification here you can just stop right away and we can uh, discuss. I want it to be a more of a conversation than just one way and then the Q and A. they have integrated. So, you can have it uh, I can have a Google pay or Alipay endpoint. I will probably show it when I talk about the API in detail. So, the question was uh, is Alipay or Google pay already integrated with the spec? Yes, W3 uh, spec is on 
payment request API is a WP spec, it's a standard, it's not like a Google API or anything, it's open and it's integrated in a few browsers. I'll be talking about what browser supports these seven things in But yeah, yeah, of course, be because they are CCI compliant and then uh, there's a process for getting your thing. Uh, the Google Pay you can have. I'm sorry, if you're going to ask a question, you need to have a microphone, otherwise our live stream viewers cannot hear you. So raise your hand if you want to ask the question. We'd be happy to bring you a mic. Yeah, uh, so that's why kind of I repeated the question for the team. I get it. Thank you. Chapter two is uh, the payment request API. Uh, so here summarizing everything in one picture, this is from the Edge document, uh, where we have our web server, web page, and the browser, and the wallet. So we have this uh, method called show on the API, which we will uh, dive in uh, right after this. And that will show a dialog box, which is within the browser. You need not worry about making your own dialog box for getting all the user in inputs. So it's basically checkout form less uh, checkout. Sounds a bit cranky, but that's how it is. There is no forms that the user will fill, right? And the user chooses a shipping address. He can choose where it, sh it should be shipped. And if it's saved in his, uh, a browser's autofill, uh, it, the same same list will be shown here in, in the uh, dialog as well. He can update the uh, shopping, uh, you know, shipping address, he can modify ads, things like that. And then the payment request API goes in, he makes a purchase, there's a success or a failure, so we have a control whether there was a success or a failure. Say, how, how, how could, what would, be the, what would be the different cases where the success or a failure happened? Um, say there, uh, the user selects an address, so you, ha you have total control when the user selects or changes an address, so you will get a callback which has the address in it. And then you can decide whether you have the ability to ship to that address or not. And right away show there in the dialog box itself that you can't really ship to this address. Ra rather than the user fills everything and then goes to check out and say, hey, sorry, we can't ship to this address. It is pretty instantaneous there because you get callbacks on each and every change. Like there is an address change and there is a, a you, you know, sh uh, the shipment type where he wants to check and if it's, a, if it's say some kind of a prime kind of service as what Amazon offers for example. So it clicks on that and you get a callback again and you can check whether for this address, for this um, item I'm trying to ship, uh, can I give the service or not? And decide on the fly and show him that, hey, sorry, uh, we can't really provide you this and the payment wouldn't, the payment button itself wouldn't be active. So APIs and demos. Uh, these are the ingredients that goes into the API. Uh, first of all, you need a modern browser, then you need the method data, details and options. Well, what do you be, what do I mean by modern browser to answering the uh, answering to the question that the gentleman asked here in the back. Uh, these are these are the browsers that are supported now like we Firefox has a plan to ship it, Edge already has Chrome and Safari is there online. So these are the uh, the red ones are uh, not there but there are they have they haven't given approvals to implement uh, this API. So it's it's on its way. So can I has it? How do how do I check whether uh, I have the payment uh, request API support in the browser or not. It's very pretty simple. You can just do a window dot payment request, check for that. If that exists, well and good, you have the payment request API with you or else uh, you, could, you should fall back to your legacy uh, payment process. So I was talking about the method data, right? So the method data would have supported methods, then it would have data. Data would have supported networks and supported types. Uh, so on the supported methods, we say basic card. So the basic cards include Visa and MasterCard. Uh, there is also uh, MX or uh, uh, there is also a proposal for how do I handle gift cards. Suppose I have, a, I, mine is a basic card, I am doing the payment with Visa but I have a gift card, I need to apply a gift card on it. How do I do it? So there is a proposal on that and there is some discussion going on with that as well. And uh, supported, again on the, on the method data you can have lot multiple supported, uh, uh, supported methods and the supported networks for it. The second one here is uh, example.com slash BobPay. So this is where Alipay or uh, Google Pay URL endpoint would come in. And then the data would be very specific to the merchant. So if you have your uh, Google Pay, uh, you know, uh, set up, then you would have your own merchant ID uh, specific. That's what you will pass it here in the data. And suppose uh, that API needs some options. You could pass it in the data, uh, you know, field of the method data. So details. Details is where we uh, say what are all the items that we are, uh, is there in the checkout. So you can say like the subtotal is this, the total is this, I am giving a discount of this and these are the uh, summary like, hey, I am shipping you uh, some uh, noodles from my restaurant or you want to say some message or uh, or you want to say you have applied, we have applied a discount coupon for, for you because you have been buying with us for consecutive uh, three weeks or something like that, right? All these descriptive messages that you want to show in your, uh, 
show in your checkout process uh, is, is goes to the details object. So, in this example there is an ID for the store and the display items what are all the items that needs to be shown in the, in the invoice basically right. So, you have the subtotal, the sales tax uh, and the total due. So, here uh, in this example it is like 55 dollars for the subtotal and the sales tax is 5 dollars, but then at the, at the, at the total amount you, you, you see that it is 65 that is that is because we need to add uh, the shipping the selected shipping cost of so if you want to add some cost whatever you want to display what is your extra like for, for us it is like the GST or something you need to, we can mention that there and it will show up in the invoice. And we can add some shipping options too like I was been mentioning you can have shipping options to be like standard or drone or whatever different type of shipping options you have. And once the user clicks on the shipping option uh, you will get a callback again to get the index of which shipping option that was selected. So, you need to say hey uh, the user so suppose the user selected drone and that locality does not have drone support then you can you can go through the index quickly see what that guy selected and check the location which you already have in your uh, request callback and say hey I am not shipping I cannot ship to you for this address because uh, my bot is dead or something like that right. So, you can give that customized message also. So, basically you will you will update your shipping options to the details object. And finally, you have the options argument where you can you can decide uh, what to ask during the uh, you know checkout process if whether you want to ask the, the payer email id name phone and shipping details all these are options you can skip all of them in the, then just the card will be there and you can you can decide based on what to do say, say, say for example on the card you know where to ship already because this you user's address is there with you and you don't want to ask him on the checkout process right so so lot of edge cases have been thought through this api and it's pretty flexible and you have total control on what you want to show on what happens when the user clicks on what. So, you you need not have to write any extra logic to handle uh, uh, the different selections and stuff. So, all of them are uh, very neat promise based uh, APIs. Talk is cheap, uh, show me the code of course. So, uh, I, I, I want to do a demo on my mobile we tried connecting it uh, my pixel 2 is bit cranky I do not know why it was not able to detect. So, I, I, I got an idea of uh, turning on my webcam and pointing my phone to the webcam so that you guys can see it on the screen. I have not tried, tried this before let me see how it goes. Uh, here is a simple uh, demo which I have hosted on my site. Uh, hope you guys can see it. Okay, at least you are able to see the red checkout button. So, very bright. Better now. Browser full screen with them. I will probably go to the night mode and check. Right, okay, I think this is fine. Um, so, I have a checkout button. You could you could you could uh, do a thing as well. You could if you have your if you have a mobile device or probably on your uh, desktop also, you can just go to hcman.com slash demo slash payment hyphen request and uh, this will load up. We just give it a second. So, when I when I click uh, checkout uh, we basically see this dialog uh, which says uh, payment API request demo that is the title I have given and uh, what, what is the card I already have and uh, I could I could go and uh, view the card. So, it shows the card which is there and I can go and edit or add a new card. So, adding card is pretty neat and it says these are the cards I have supported and it will validate for you whether the card is valid or not. So, you need not worry about doing all those validation stuff. And after you add the card you just go ahead and hit the pay button and it says processing. This this I am just faking I do not have a server to process your card information, but you could you could definitely give me your card information that would be helpful. So, I would just uh, ok here here is a deal it is asking for the CVV. Uh, I would show you my CVV 1, 2, 3, pretty easy and I just go and confirm and uh, here we would see the JSON structure of what the response would look like. So, that was a demo experiment I will bring up the same here on the desktop. It is not just the mobile web it has the same experience I just wanted to show how good the pop up looks within the uh, mobile device. On the, on the desktop is the same experience you have your uh, payment option you can select the card and uh, here are the details order summary uh, and your friends and family discount I was talking about we see it is in INR and I have given a discount of 500 rupees 
and then we just go and do a pay and it asks for CVV and I hit a confirm. So, we see this is what the response looks like. So, the method was a basic card, the details had billing address, address line 1 to 3. I was lazy to fill all the address, so I just did that and, and city was Bangalore current, you, you get all the information, you get my phone number as well and the card I have just masked here. So, we would basically on the response you would get the entire card number. Uh, I have just masked it here for the demo and the security and, and you could just go ahead and play it and let us see the code now. So, we will get more clarity on how it works. Should I just bump the fonts or is it ok? Yeah, uh, so the the magic happens with uh, init, pay, init payment request. So, we are checking whether uh, we have the payment request support in our browser or not. If we have the support, we will go and init the payment request. In init payment request, we have networks like Amex, Dinners, Discover, all this MasterCard, Visa and the types. We have debit, credit, prepaid and the method data, it says supported methods is a basic card. Previously, it was taken an array. Now, it is like we have to just give a string which is like basic card. That is what we are, basic card is what we are supporting in this use case. And the data with supported networks with all the networks as mentioned above and supported types are the types like debit, credit and uh, prepaid. And the details object looks like this. This is where I said buy some food from an Indian restaurant and the currency uh, is INR, the value is so and so and the display items, original amount, friends and family discount. So, it is a very neat uh, uh, you know uh, structure. So, suppose they, suppose there you would get you would get all this response from your service right. So, you are making a call your service gives you a JSON. So, you could just massage it and put it put it your uh, details object. So, it is very light on the front end. And then you have the payment request with method data and details. I have not passed in the options here. As the name says, options is still optional, wherein options as I mentioned you could ask for the email address or phone number and things like that. Uh, so, I have a button here on clicking, uh, you on clicking of that button, we would pass in the request. So, we would get the request here and request dot show would result in this dialog box. So, request dot show would result in the dialog box and that, that is a promise based API. So, you would get the instrumented response that I was logging there. You could pick up that instrumented response and pass it to your server. That's what we have to do uh, to know whether the transaction went through or not. So I'm just faking the response, uh, faking the server call here, just with some just some timeout, and then we will get a complete success failure whether the the transaction was successful or not. On complete, you you will decide and pass a, a success. On success, uh, I'm just in this case I'm just updating the DOM to show the response, right? So it's it's a pretty easy thing to do. So if you cancel the payment. I am logging like aborted request cancel. So, you could, uh, you could also uh, just hit an escape and that would result in a cancel as well. So, uh, so any queries on this part of the code? Yeah. This here? Can you see it now? So, that is the uh, So, in, in this use case, I have uh, not used options. I, I just, so you could add options and see uh, how it looks like. I definitely ask you to fiddle around with the code. I just got a bell on the time box. So Hello. Yeah. Uh, so, I was not really clear on where the payment actually happened. Like you got the response from the payment API, was the payment already done by then? That is a good question. It is not done. So, as I was being speaking, this payment uh, request API is just a mediator. It does not do any payment for you, but handles all the hassles of uh, filling the forms and selecting the card and types. Right? It is abstracting the UI or the UX for the customer. Yes. Actually, uh, it, it, it does not. payment gateway. Yeah, so it, it, it you can assume that you have a big you had a big checkout form right basically where you would validate the card and everything all those processes handled by this and you just fill in your card and if it is already added it you can just select the card and then in the response you will get all the information the card what was the amount and everything and you pick that and pass it to your server and then your server will pass it on to the payment gateway and the payment gateway will send a response saying that hey the, the payment was successful or did it fail. Makes sense. Thanks. 
So I've also created a, a fiddle. Uh, Himant, thank you. Yeah. Uh, so with this, I mean, uh, when you mentioned that uh, the payment service provider has to be PCI DSS compliant, yeah. uh, is he capturing the card details on the screen itself and uh, then it is getting sent over the wire or uh, how is it going to work? Yeah, so there, there are two options here. Uh, uh, you enter the card details and you, it, it stays uh, on your client. It doesn't, it doesn't get stored anywhere. It, it doesn't get you know, stored in some server or something. And it passes to the website's uh, server call. So there is, there is no man in the middle attack. I can, I can expect that's what you're thinking, sorry. So if your, your site is already a PCI compliant site and the, uh, obviously the provider would be, if your site is already, you, you would not be doing that. And if you see all this uh, online um, site where you can purchase, there will be a certificate saying that these are the compliance we have. So if that compliance is there, they'll make sure that it doesn't kind of leak over the abstraction or can, can get, can happen a man in the middle attack and someone can steal your details. That, that won't really happen. And uh, the other thing is you can authenticate uh, with your, say, Google account. And then you have saved your card details on, on your uh, Google's personal uh, storage. So that, that details you can fetch up and say, hey, this is the card I see. It will just be the last four digits and it will ask for you for the CVV and you can hit there and it's like the token based authentication that happens. So you have two different ways to do that. But it's secure. So uh, I have created one more uh, fiddle where if you want, you can go and play around uh, in this fiddle and try to add different options and see how it behaves. In this case, compared to the previous one, it is a bit more verbose where you can choose the shipping address. These are all the shipping address that's uh, saved in my uh, Google Chrome browser, right? So these are all the shipping address. And uh, I can also choose my payment mode. I can add a card, the same process repeat. And then I have my contact information here. And I can, I can after I choose my shipping address, uh, this is the error scenario I was talking about. It says, you, we can't ship to this address. Right? In this demo, I wanted to show like, how you could show whether you, you can't, can you ship to this address or not, right? So it's not like after paying or after going to the payment process, we say, hey, sorry, or it's just, it says there instantaneously, so you can add a different address or choose a different address. And after choosing, you would get a payment method. Uh, this fiddle, I'll probably tweet or something you can do, or you can just go to jsfiddle slash numans and you will find it there. And uh, probably you can, we can take the conversation uh, further offline and I'm, I'm definitely, uh, I'm happy to help and uh, if, if I can't get uh, right answers, I know folks, a few folks who are, who are, who are part of the like, development, I can get in touch with them as well and uh, see where it goes. Hope, hope you like the uh, payment request API and the web payments and uh, hope you guys will use it on your, uh, you know, mobile browsers and on your PWAs and make it even more uh, sexy if I can call it. Thank you.